Shut up and sit down. Hi uh, guys, I'm Dodge, this is Big Mech's Workshop and Paint Studio, and this will be the last time we're doing the Lehman Russ for quite some time now. Uh, we just want to paint it one more time as we stripped it down. Uh, we've gone for a sort of blue urban camo for this one, we were going to do a white camo, but it never shows up well on camera, so you can use these techniques from this video that we're going to use, and uh, apply them, just changing the colours ever so slightly. So you take the blues out and replace them with whites and greys. So I started with a black primer uh, by Vallejo as always and I'm going to use grey blue by Modlair. Um, all I'm doing is putting on a uh, initial highlight here. Uh, at this point I just changed my nozzle for a new one so I was breaking that in and as you can see uh, my airbrush is uh, playing up a little bit. Even though it's a brand new nozzle I'm used to having my needle go through that nozzle a little bit further as it slowly pushes its way through the nozzle over time. And so the new one was a bit shorter, so I was being a bit heavy handed on the trigger. But all you need to do here is um, highlight all the top edges. Um, obviously, overdone it a bit there, but that's fine. I basically, ended up giving it mainly a base coat, but uh, you can see some of the black shades through there. Next is Games Workshop's Dark Reaper. And again, we're going to hit those very similar spots. We're just going to make the area that we're covering a little bit smaller this time. Also, I know that this is an airbrush paint, not everyone's got an airbrush, but I'd not used my airbrush in so long, guys, that um, I needed to get back into using it again, so I thought this would be a good opportunity for that. Now, we're going to use Games Workshop's Thunderhawk Blue, and as you can see, that really starts to show up as a contrast against everything else now. If you, what I should have done, really, is leave these colours till the very end, um, as these were the colours I preferred the most, and I do actually switch these as an extra coat at the end of the video uh, just to bring the blues back in you could do this by hand if you wanted to um, the same techniques would apply you just apply it with a uh, brush instead of an airbrush and now I'm going to go in with the Negro Grey by Scale 75 and that's really watered down and just put in that shading that I went over before uh, just to make it stand out a little bit more it's going around all the inside edges uh, with a fine cone and uh, bringing out that shade next we're going to give that whole thing a varnish uh, that's kind of important as you don't want to rip all your paint off and then we're going to use Mascol by Umbro this is really good stuff you've probably seen us use it before and um, we're going to paint on random patterns and I'm putting these on quite thick. I'm putting a blob in the middle and then spreading them out, which is just the preferred, the way I prefer to do it. Um, we obviously don't want to cover the whole tank here, but it's a good start. And what we're going to do is keep coming back and adding more as we do other layers. Uh, it's obviously going to pay off to keep your pattern sporadic. And at this point, none of them should really be joining. Then I'm going to give the whole thing a coat of Negro Grey by Scale 75, just to give it a nice dark base for me to work with. Because um, obviously we're going to paint another layer of colour over this now, and we don't want the blue showing through, we want a nice solid base for the other one. And I do like the Scale 75 colours for this, as um, they are very thin and go through the airbrush really, really well. Thick paint and mask all will not work together very well at all. This next colour is Dark Sea Green by Model Colour. Sort of a, a bluey grey. I'm um, going to use that to just highlight the tops of the tanks. We're going to go around all the outside of the tracks, top part, and obviously the turret we're doing in the same fashion as well. Uh, I do go a bit over the top, but like I said, it's been a long time since I used my airbrush on a video, so you'll have to bear with me on that. Basically just picking out the centers and the tops of everything. Some people do these armor plates here the other way around and highlight these centers. I prefer to try and highlight the edges of them. And the beauty of the airbrush is you can go over it as many times as you want because the paint is so thin. Now we're going to use light gray by model color to uh, start bringing up those edges. Now what I did do on this was the same mistake I always make and that is I didn't peel the mask off before doing this next layer. So I should finish this layer, then peel the mask all off, but I don't. I keep adding more mask all. Um, 
the best way to do it is to do two steps like this and peel off the mask off. Um, then re do the varnish for both layers, re reapply the mask over the bits you've already put the pattern on and add new ones to it and then go back and uh, do it again, take it off, varnish it because that way you don't get the layers of paint trapped in between the layers of mask and it won't pull the paint off. Next is Sky Grey by Model Colour and as you can see this is rather vibrant because at this point I've added more layers of mask gold, so we're just going for a nice solid coat as you can see we've got the purple areas of mask gold, and then we've got the bluey grey ones that we've painted over what I should have done like I was saying is pull off that mask gold, varnish and repaint it back on if you want a really good quality tank that would be the way to do it and our wolf grey by model air is going to be applied now it's very difficult to get whites to show up on here but the wolf grey is sort of a off bluish white and I'm basically painting that into all the shaded areas um, to give those a little bit of depth. I think, I'm, I think I'm painting them into the shaded areas guys, I can't quite remember and it's very difficult to see. Um, I do change the background up in a sec with a uh, grey background just to try and pick out the tank on camera. Now I'm just going to use Negro Grey, which you could just use on its own anyway to add those uh, the bit of depth in and the uh, shades. And just use the previous grey as a highlight. At this point I felt I was getting the knack of my airbrush again. Uh, it's one of those things you can pick up get good at it, but if you leave it lying around for months and don't use it, um, you do forget how to use it properly. Now and then, as you can see, there's another layer of uh, mask gold over the top of all that, and we started joining all these up. Try not to overlap them, uh, as that causes problems later on. Now we have Steel Legion Drab by Games Workshop, which doesn't really go through the airbrush that well, it being a base paint, but it is the right sort of colour, so if you've got something in the model colour range or model air range that matches, you can just use that. And also this time I decided that um, because we've just done the grey there, doing this will actually let the highlights bleed through with the pre-shade uh, so we don't need to do as many layers for this one now we're going to use Baneblade Brown as the highlight for this and at this point I decided that the because the colour you finished with last is going to be so that probably be the most part of the pattern depending on how much mask you put on so I did decide after this to go back and um, do those blues again just to make sure that the blues were the uh, the main colour on this. Now to uh, the big reveal, because when you're doing a project like this you don't know what it's going to look like until you peel the mask all off, so it's kind of exciting to pull that off and uh, see what results we get. And as you can see, uh, some of that paint's actually flaking where I've layered the mask all without taking it off, putting a varnish on and uh, then doing the next layers. I know that's a lot of work though, uh, you can do it like this and all those flaky bits of paint you can get a very soft brush and just basically dry brush them off. It's back and forth as a sort of clean up step which is what I've done here. So we've got a relatively smooth paint job now and we have some okay looking camo. Unfortunately because of the way I, uh, I did the mask all there not all the highlights stayed where they were supposed to stay because they were very thin layers of paint and they have been pulled off hence the hence repeatedly telling you that it's best to take the mask all off after each couple of steps and varnish. Well that's what we've got so far. So the next thing I did was very simply take a large Games Workshop dry brush and some Screaming Skull and just gently rotate that over all the edges. A screaming Skull can work as a highlight for anything. <clears throat> I'm not very good at doing dry brushes really. Um, I thought it started to make it look bit of a mess, um, a bit too dusty for my liking. If I wanted dust on it I would apply that with uh, weathering powders and stuff. But you can see that picks up the edges and uh, starts bringing the shape of the tank out, which you're really going to need as we are doing a camo tank and that's breaking up the shape so you need something on those hard lines. 
if you don't like dry brushing like me you can do it with an edge highlight just a really fine edge highlight with a screaming skull or any very very light color to be honest which makes sure it's uniform all the way through now for the tracks we are going to use gunmetal by model air metallic and one of the reasons i picked this is it's a uh, good consistency of paint and gives a nice coverage and it's pretty much lead belcher for games workshop it just applies a lot easier and a lot smoother basically i'm going to go around and i'm going to pick out all the tracks and all the other metallic parts as you can tell i blacked out everything else in the vallejo primer just to help break up the shape of the tank so i can have a look and uh, see what else needs doing to it and what sort of color palette i'm going for and of course uh, it's time to apply some null oil I am using a wash brush for a change and the reason I'm using the wash brush now is because the tracks are actually quite large and I wouldn't want to use a standard brush. This is only watered down 50-50 with water and I actually wanted it quite stark and I wanted it to sit in all those recesses. It's just going to save uh, some time later on. Just be careful you don't drown it too much so the, the tracks go black or that it spills off onto the work you've previously done. Now we're going to use Model Air Metallic Gunmetal again, but this time we're going to dry brush that over with a small dry brush. I'm not a fan of dry brushing, but I also didn't want to pick it out individually with a brush. I did want to get this tank done sometime this week. I'm basically just going over all the raised areas there, and it's not the greatest or sharpest dry brushes, but I'm basically just blending all those colours together with the shades underneath them, and we're going to come back and do some more work on them later. Now I'm mixing some steel by model air metallic into the gunmetal and going back and forth instead of up and down. Um, well, instead of going along the tracks lengthways, I'm going widthways and that's going to help pick out the edges. Which is something you're going to need because those edges of the tracks right next to the blues, um, they need to have a sharp edge, otherwise it's going to look really flat. Um, the circular motion does work for this and I prefer to uh, dry brush from further up the brush so there's not as much pressure on it. Uh, the further away from the brush tip you are, uh, the less pressure is going to be applied and uh, the easier it is going to be to get the dry brush where you want it. Then just to smooth all that out and get rid of any brush strokes, we're going to use a null oil again. But this is uh, watered down a lot more as you can tell. It's like watered down about 75-80% water. Because I obviously don't want to drown out all the detail that we've started putting onto those tracks. So for the Aquilas and some of the other logos, I think, is it just an Aquila? There's an Aquila here and there's one on the back of the tank I think as well. We're going to be using Balthazar Gold as a base. I wanted a nice rich, um, warm metallic colour to contrast the very cold palette we've got. Lots of blues, greys and whites on here. Uh, the only other warm colour is the Bane Blade Brown. So we needed to break up those metallic parts and Balthazar Gold seemed like a good base. Uh, we're going to start working that up as well in a second to a uh, brighter colour, making it look even warmer. So next up is going to be Brass Scorpion. Which is, um, it's not quite a gold, but um, it's a very warm sort of bronze colour. Um, I do like using this one quite a lot. Just be careful not to get your uh, paint anywhere where you don't want it. And I've left the skull at the moment because that's going to get done later on. Now to bring out the details in the Aquila we're going to give the Brass Scorpion an Agrax Earthshade Wash. Now I've thinned this down a little bit and you do want it to sort of gather in the grooves of the wings but do it in several layers if you're not sure or you haven't got this technique down because uh, you don't want to drown the whole thing so it's a dark brown because then you have to bring it all the way back up again or just go straight back over it again with brass scorpion so i started picking out the details on the back of this is it some ammo hatch or something i'm not sure because i don't play imperial guard but we're going to use caliban green as it's a base paint um 
and it's going to, should give us a nice base even though we've got different colours underneath them. So you're going to want to do two or three coats of this uh, nice and thin to make sure you get a good solid coat of the Caliban green with none of the white or blue showing through because we really don't want these details to blend into the back of the tank as everything else is already designed to blend. Uh, for the skull I was I decided to use a XV88 as a bit of a warmer undertone for the skull than usual rather than using a morning fan. Uh, it sort of blends a little bit and complements the Bane Blade Brown but it doesn't contrast too much either as I think the Brass Scorpion draws enough attention to it as it is. Now I started picking out the Aquilas a little bit more including the one on the turret and that's a uh, Brass Scorpion with a bit of Rune Lord Brass added to it. Because I didn't want to jump from one set of paints to another so I thought I'd mix it to make that transition across the wings ever so more subtle. You want to get the two main top parts of those wings and then follow the rest of the feathers just on along the tips and the edges. Now for the um, lenses on the turret I decided to start with a corn red. Again trying to add some warm warmth to this palette as it's a very cold one. So from here on in, besides the armour, which is pretty much done, it is all warmer colours. Um, again, you want to be really careful with this, I'm using a, uh, that looks like a much smaller brush than usual. Now I didn't want the lenses to match the bolt guns on the side, so I decided to go for Burnt Red by Model Colour, which is a sort of a cross, cross between sort of a cross between corn red and wasdaka somewhere in between there with a little hint of orange to it but it's actually quite a dark color it's one i find myself using more often it makes a good base for this uh, as you can see i've not done the metallic works on the bolt guns yet but uh, i'm going to save that till all the washes and everything are done for the reds now to carry on painting the lenses we are going to use mephiston red what we're going to do is basically take the top half of the entire lens in a diagonal line from the left bottom to the right top and basically just paint in half a triangle. It's the easiest way to do it and then just feather the details out. Just take the paint off the brush while the rest of it's wet on the model and just feather that out. Obviously you can add washers and everything to these once you're done to uh, blend that work in as uh, glazing in that sort of area is actually quite difficult, it being so small. Now Evil Sun Scarlet is gone over again and all we're going to do is the same process but we're just not going to bring it back as far down the lens. And uh, as, you can see, you can s as you can see the uh, top corners are starting to brighten up a little bit and give the model, <laughs> give the lenses a little bit of shine. After Evil Sun Scarlet, it's Wild Rider Red, which is uh, much more orange than it is red. And this is almost just an edge highlight, just bringing in the top left corner a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm using a Windsor Newton here, uh, double zero by the looks of it. Which is a lot better for this sort of detail work. And you can pretty much call it quits at that point and those lenses are pretty much done, you can always add a, a thin wash over the top of them. So, the next colour is Zandri Dust. I should have been able to guess that one really, without looking at my notes. But yeah, it's, it's a really good colour for the skull. And you don't want to cover the entire skull, you want to leave some of that XV88 um, in the recesses, like the eye sockets and in the nose underneath the skull. Now, when it comes to painting these reds for lenses, uh, I've not actually done one of these before, so I thought I'd muck about with this and show you how I was going to do that. Same sort of technique here, but um, starting again with the Mephiston red. No, no, this is a Mephiston red over a corn red. What I'm doing here is I'm just feathering from the center. No, sorry, from the left and to the right to the center. Bit more of a sporadic pattern, so it's got a bit of a curve to it. So now I'm going to go over that with Evil Sun Scarlet 
after the Mephisto on red, working to a smaller area. And the main key point of this sort of light here is you want the middle section to be the brightest. But because it's got round edges around it, you want to uh, pull those out as well. You want to pull those out so you've got crescent moons around and then it goes to a smaller sort of space, sort of like a Wi-Fi um, logo with a dot in the middle and the brackets around the outside. And after the Evil Sun Scarlet, it, Evil Sun Scarlet, it's a bit of Wild Rider Red. And again, doing the same sort of thing, but bringing that area in a little bit smaller. And now, as you can see, Wild Rider Red is much more orange. And uh, we're starting to get a transition there that looks like it's got a hot spot in the middle and uh, brighter colours around the outside, but more of a reflective surface. After that, I think there's only one more colour for that part, and that is Troll Slayer Orange. Very thinly down the middle. You can go brighter if you want and add some more orangey yellows to it. Or even, what I should have done really was just put a Lamenta's yellow wash over the top of the whole thing. And that would have really helped blend those together. But it's up to you uh, how bright you take this or what colour you want to do it. You can also do it in blues for the lighting effects. But I was just mucking about with this one because I'd not tried doing one of these lights before. And we're back to the guns. I'm going to use army pink and red tone to tone down that um, burnt red by model colour. Not that it's not toned down enough as it is, but I wanted a much more rich, dark red for this one. Again, I left the metallic work off this so I could uh, just do these quickly and uh, in a dirty fashion. And then I'll put the metallics in off camera later on because it's going to be the same metallics as uh, everything else that we've done. At this point, you don't really want to be adding too much extra to the palette. And now back to this crescent sort of reef thing, we're going to use Warg Flesh by Games Workshop. Working to the top points of each of the leaves, cloves, I'm not sure what they are, but you want to be covering about 50% of those. Um, I'd still not decided what to do with those engines, whether to make them a different colour at this point either, but uh, we'll get to those in a sec. So after that, the only thing really to do is to touch those up one more time, right towards the very tips, and that's a Warboss Green. Um, you can overbrush these almost, um, letting all the other work that you've done sit in the recesses, and it should bring out that shape. The shape does actually catch the brush quite well. After that, it's a shab to bone on the skull again and we're going to start picking out just the brow and the top of the forehead um, the sculpt for the teeth for this skull uh, pretty much non-present but you can paint those in with a small Winsor Newton if you feel the need to now I decided that the engines were going to be a little bit dirtier than the rest of the metallic work uh, being engines and all but I didn't want to use a lot of weathering like I do with the Nurgle stuff so I started with Model Air Metallic Black which is a black metal um, it basically looks like a gun metal no, uh, chain mail by Games Workshop or Lead Belcher that's had a null oil wash on it so it basically misses a step for you although it doesn't add the depth as it's all a unified colour but I thought you know, I'd just change the silvers on these ever so slightly. Now I'm going to use Oily Steel by Model Colour, as I obviously, not only does the title fit, it does give a very greasy sort of steel look, and that's what I was going for with these. The brushwork here is not superb, but it doesn't really need to be, as I'm going to put washes on these, and then I'm going to put oil paint on the whole lot as well, so. The uh, loose brushwork around those edges and those hard lines will disappear uh, once we put the other layers and washes on. After the oily steel, uh, we're, going, we're going to add a little bit of iron breaker. I'm not sure why I decided to uh, pick out the tops of these. I mean, it did show up on camera better than the back of the engine. But uh, we're going to work around all those edges as well. And basically anything that stands outwards. So the sort of metal straps that are holding those 
to the tank are one of the main features there, leaving the engines actually much dirtier underneath those. Sort of adds some high contrast to those sort of metallic parts. Now, Agrax Earthshade is going to be applied to the skulls. Now this is very thin, as you can tell, because I don't want to flood the detail work. So just to add a little bit more depth to that and make it look a bit more three-dimensional. I'm not going to put a wash on that. <coughs> I'm not going to put a wash on that reef thing because um, the oil wash will do the rest of that work for me. Now I'm going to apply a oil an oil wash to the engines, and at this point I'm not watering this one down. I'm actually putting a straight null oil wash on this because I want it to be really vibrant, well, really dark. Sorry, over those vibrant metallics that we've done to a. Uh, let the bright highlights become more muted but in succession so that it looks like it's blended a lot more than it should be because they're such high contrast and that's as you can see is given us a nice color for the uh, engines there that's a bit different to the tracks now to edge highlight the guns including the last gun on the front it is just was dacker red on the corners if you wanted to be a bit more fancy, you could do Waz Daka Red, and then for the very corners of the guns and red highlights, you could mix in a little bit of Rakhoth Flesh, and you get this off red colour that's a little bit more muted, and you can just bring that to the corners, just making them look a bit th more three-dimensional. Next up is, well, in fact, the very last paint is just an Ishabti Bone, again, over the bits that we've had Grax uh, shaded and just picking out the brow again and the top of the teeth. And that is pretty much it for this. Um, at this point it's time to hit it with a varnish and using a pin wash we're going to bring out all those details a lot more and we'll have a look at that in a second. As you can see after the uh, pin wash all those details are now pulled together all that depth is now put back in. Which is something that seems to have been missing the entire time, but don't worry that we do that a lot in our videos. You'll see not much going on, and then the oil wash at the end will snap everything together and make it look pretty decent. I didn't put any decals on because I know absolutely nothing about Imperial Guard tanks or their logos. Um, I also didn't put any weathering on as I thought this video was already long enough. Um, I would have just sprayed some weathering effects on the underneath of those tracks and I possibly still could do if we were going to turn this into a studio army and learn about the Imperial Guard for battle reports as this would match our board very very well. So do hope uh, you learned something from this video guys, I know I did, I made a few mistakes and didn't finish everything off fully on this model but it was mainly about the camo pattern and uh, the colours used to create that. So I do thank you all for watching. And we have a special thank you to our patrons as well, who help support this channel and help us buy these models. We have D-Wack, Warren, Love Minis, The Orc Boys, Ludwig Hofbauer, Kit Lindquist, and Agnes of Dawn. You are our top paying Patreons, you are awesome. You keep giving us stuff to paint, and we keep painting and making tutorials for everyone. If you guys want to join them on Patreon and get early access to almost two months ahead in videos and other random content, uh, all the links are in the description as well as the link for the outpost which is our affiliate link um, this <coughs> which is our affiliate link they sell brand new stuff uh, brand new hobby stuff at a second hand price yeah they are really good go check those out all the other links for our social media in the description you guys know what to do hit like hit subscribe I'll share on Facebook I on your social media because that always helps our channel out and I will be bringing you more imperial stuff over the next couple of weeks we'll catch you in the next one